Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. Today we'll be having an overview of several sections through a dogfish. As usual, you can access fully zoomable digital versions of all the slides via the website at downthescope.co.uk. Links to the slides are in the video description. Dogfish is the common name given to a small group of sharks. Sharks are evolutionary ancient creatures with the first fossils appearing around 400 million years ago. Their distinguishing features are their jaws as opposed to the jawless vertebrates like hagfish and lampreys, as well as their cartilaginous skeletons, which differentiate them from vertebrates with bony skeletons like fish. Cartilaginous fish, or the chondrichthys, are divided into two subclasses, the elasmobranchs, which are the sharks, and the batoidea, made up of rays and skates. It's the elasmobranchs, specifically the dogfish, that we'll be focused on today. Within the slide collection, there are eight dogfish slides. Three of these are transverse sections, two through the gills and one through the more caudal coelom or body cavity. The remaining five are longitudinal sections through different parts of the dogfish. Given that the whole dogfish fits on a microscope slide, these are likely to be very young specimens which are still developing. First off, let's work out where each of these sections has come from. We can use structural landmarks in the head, specifically the brain, eyes and gills, to help us. Starting with the longitudinal sections from medial or most in the middle to lateral or most on the outside, we have slide 240, which is taken from straight down the middle of the dogfish or along the midline. We can tell that it's from the midline because the brain is cut neatly in half so we can see the ventricles or open cavities within the brain. We can also see the start of the esophagus just at the back of the oral cavity. There's a small portion of gills just ventral to the oral cavity, but other sections that are more lateral will have larger portions. Heading cordially, we begin to get an idea of the body plan of a dogfish. Just behind the gills, there is a small body chamber. If we zoom in, we can see a membranous sac filled with lots of ovoid cells with oval nuclei. These cells are red blood cells which are nucleated in all species apart from mammals. We'll get a better view of the heart in another section. Behind the cardiac cavity there's another membrane line division called the coelomic cavity which contains all of the other organs. Again we'll have a better view of these in other sections. Dorsally, we can see good sections of the spinal cord and the notochord, indicating that this is a midline section. Of course, it's not perfectly visible all the way down the dogfish, but it is a pretty good midline section. Behind the salomic cavity, we have chevrons of striated muscle tissue forming the tail, with another small section of spinal cord enclosed by vertebra and with the notochord below. The next section closest to the midline is slide 243. Looking at the head, we still have a good portion of the brain, but we don't have any eye. However, looking cordially along the back, we don't have very much spinal cord or notochord, indicating that we're just off the midline. In this slide, we can see the heart, which is in a much clearer plane of section. The hearts of sharks have only two chambers as opposed to the three in reptiles and amphibians or four in mammals. These are the atrium which receives blood and the ventricle which acts as the main pump to drive blood around the body. Looking cordially towards the salomic cavity, we can see the esophagus up here entering the stomach. Below and above the stomach are two portions of an organ 
composed of large cells with clear vacuoles, giving it a bubbly appearance. This is the liver. The cellular detail isn't brilliant in this section, but improves in others. Also in the salomic cavity, we have a few round sections of intestine, but the dominating organ is this huge oval sac filled with yellowish globules. You might be tempted to identify these as red blood cells, but look a bit more closely and you'll see that they're not nucleated as red blood cells should be. Let's look at a section where we can see red blood cells and these globules in the same section. The globules are much bigger with a variety of different sizes and shapes. Actually, these globules are made up of yolk and the large structure containing them is the yolk sac, which feeds the dogfish during development, much like the yolk of a bird's egg. In this section, we can even see the connection between the yolk sac and the intestines. Next on our journey from medial to lateral, we have slide 244. There's no brain on this section. But we finally have a slice through the eye behind which we have some of the skull made up of cartilage enclosing some cavities. Ventral to that and below the oral cavity we have a larger section of gills where we can begin to make out the circular cartilage forming the five gill arches. Caudal to the gills there is the cardiac chamber now containing mainly atrium with a small sliver of ventricular muscle. Again we can see the esophagus which is entering the stomach down here. Looks like we may have strayed a little towards the midline here because we have a section of spinal cord above. Surrounding the stomach again is the liver And caudal to all of that, we have more sections of intestine and the yolk sac again dominating most of the salomic cavity. More laterally placed is the section on slide 237. Again, we have a nice section uh, of the head with eye and the skull cavities behind. The circular structure in front of the eye is the olfactory bulb which, as you would expect given their reputation, is exceptionally well developed in sharks. It was probably present on 244, but the nose was cut off on the scanned version of the slide. In this slide, we have a much larger section of the gills again, and very little cardiac cavity. The salomic cavity has changed as well. Now it's dominated by the liver, which has good cellular detail you can see large blood vessels dissecting between lobules of large cells with round nuclei and clear vacuolated cytoplasm. Ventral to the liver, there is a smaller section of the yolk sac, which is in close proximity to some colon. Behind these organs, there is a section of glandular tissue which might be from the intestinal system or more likely from the reproductive system. I'm going to have to do more reading before I decide. Finally, we have a really nice section of kidney adhered to the dorsal body wall. The most lateral section is slide 241. In terms of head structures, only the eye is present with no brain or skull left. It's so lateral that there isn't even an obvious oral cavity. Only the cartilage and muscles of the jaw. Instead, we have a great view of the five gills with their branching tree-like gill filaments and lamellae. Within the salomic cavity, there are good sections of liver, stomach and colon with a much smaller portion of the yolk sac. Again, there's a small section of kidney adhered to the dorsal body wall. 
So those are all the longitudinal sections and the organs you can see in each one. The transverse sections are much simpler since slides 246 and 247 are from very similar regions but have different stains. Looking at slide 246 we can see the vertebral canal with a vertebra enclosing the spinal cord and then the notochord below it. These structures are all encased in striated muscle. Below these structures is the oral cavity, surrounded on either side by the branchial cavities containing the gill filaments and the parabranchial cavity where water exits the gills. Below the oral cavity is a vein with a thin wall and filled with red blood cells on top of a muscular artery similarly filled with red blood cells. The final slide in this series is 249, which is taken through the salomic cavity at the level of the pectoral fins which we can see coming off on either side. Similar to 246, there is the spinal cord, vertebral column, notochord and dorsal muscles at the top. Within the salomic cavity, we have good views of all of the major organs, including two sections of liver and a section of stomach, colon and yolk sac. Between the stomach and colon, there is a round section of intestine and next to that, there is a section of glandular tissue which is likely to represent pancreas. This picture summarises where each section is likely to have come from given the organs we can see on each slide. So that sums up all of the major features we can see on each of the dogfish slides. My plan is to make more detailed videos about each of the organ systems present using a mixture of these slides that give the best view of specific features and structures. So if you've enjoyed this video and the slides, don't forget to subscribe for a more in-depth look at dogfish anatomy and physiology. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to find an answer for you. If you want to see slides of tissue from other animals, then you can visit the website. There's a link in the comments. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.